thought I'd take on the, the role of hosting this for him. Um, today's webinar is on pipeline rehabilitation, structural PE, semi structural say, uh, PE, and spray liner. And we're looking at staff Dave McDonald from Radius of Terra here with us. Hi, Dave. Um, this is Dave's 38th year in the pipeline industry, having started with LCA Pipeline in Leeds, soon swallowed up by Walsey Group. After 10 years, Dave moved into Fusion to work their Fusion provider brand of distribution of pipeline products and all things but Fusion and Electrofusion. Following this, Dave moved into the contract inside the industry at Energy Assets Group. And in 2010, Dave was persuaded by a previous manager, Dave Sykes, to join his emerging company, U Plus, part of Upinor, growing into a very successful contracting business. A couple of, couple of name changes later, now called Radius Subterra, he's here with us. So without further ado, Dave, any questions from you guys, could you put them in the chat box and we'll get to them at the end. Um, over to you, Dave. Thank you very much, Matt. I hope everybody can hear me clearly. Um, my name is Dave MacDonald, and as Matt said, I work for Radius Subterra, and I'm going to do a presentation today on our lining technologies for the water, gas, and other utility sectors. Hopefully somewhere in the audience is Dave Sykes, the Head of Operations for Radius Subterra, and Nick Gillam, the BDM Manager for the Subcoat FLP products. So if the questions get a little bit too technical, I can always call on them for assistance. My presentation will cover who are Radius Subterra and what we do, because as, as Matt mentioned, we have had a couple of name changes and we are part of a, a big group of people, uh, companies that, that are involved in the PE pipe industry. So Radius Subterra became the trading name of Radius Plus in November 2019. Radius Plus have been trading since 2002 and we are part of the Radius Systems Group who many of you know will make a polyethylene pipes and electrofusion fittings. They were previously known as Upinor. Some of the things that we do, uh, we're a specialist services installation company who provide under pressure connections. Uh, we flow stopping services, pressure testing to name but a few. But what you'll see today are pipeline rehabilitation systems for the gas, water and oil sectors. These systems are proven systems, ready to go. There are, we've been doing these for a number of years, but if you've never seen these before, you might actually say these are some of the most innovative solutions that, that are out there at the moment, that these are ready to go systems. So the technologies, what do we do? Well, we restore and protect drinking water quality, and we restore the structural integrity of pipelines. A bit of further background on some of the statistics around the company and the services that we do. Uh, Radius Subterra wholly owned subsidiary of Radius Group and that means we're part of the same group as Radius Systems and over the years we have rehabilitated over 5,000 kilometres of pipes using these technologies and that's worldwide. We've over 35 years of expertise in these technologies and obviously being part of Radius Group, we're part of a very financially strong organisation and our approach is to be involved as early as possible. That's when we can bring most med benefit to the, to the schemes that's out there, uh, early involvement to, for us to, to throw our hat in the ring and tell you what we can actually uh, uh, advise with. So we're this cradle to grave approach to, to the projects that we look at. We do also have a full range of under pressure connections as part of what we do, what we class as our day to day services. And these have been operating since sort of 2002, but they integrate fully, or some of the polyethylene connections that we do integrate fully with the um, modified pipes or the diameter reductions and the pipe folding systems that we do. You will need to make connections off them, and we do have a system that allows us to make connections onto those pipes. So, as I mentioned, we have other systems within, within the group or within our company of what we do on a day-to-day on -day services. 
We tried to split all our work streams down into core technologies and we're going to concentrate on pipeline rehabilitation and traditional methods of pipeline installation fall into generally three categories. There's boring, tunneling and then the trenching. And each one of these will bring a different set of advantages and disadvantages to a particular situation that you face with. So that's part of the what's available out there for you at the moment. More and more we've been challenged with the rehabilitating of aging assets and installing new mains with no dig techniques and minimum disruption operations. And these can be broken down into spray lining, uh, insertion techniques, and then techniques where they actually destroy the whole of the host main. So oh, the ones that we'll be looking at today. Inside the duvet covers. The mic on. Um, so what we're looking at today is the, uh, the, the, the resins on the spray lining, the slip lining to a degree, but then uh, where we come in with our close fit technologies, uh, we've got nothing to do with destroying the hosts uh, in, in those kind of things. So what we're looking at, two of the technologies will be classed as close fit slip lining techniques, concentric diameter reduction and site folded. And then we have a couple of other things, uh, factory folded and, and spirally wound. But the two that we're going to concentrate today are the, are the, uh, the diameter reduction and the pipe folding. So for applications such as new pipes needing basic corrosion protection or bare metal pipes needing a coating to prevent leaching of the transported fl fluid, we have a spray applied coating and these spray liners will address water quality issues. These are rapid setting materials and normally applied up to around one millimeter thickness. We can apply this to new pipes under construction or we can retrofit to existing pipelines where a problem has developed. The objective of the coatings is to take the bare metal out of contact with the water to deal with the water quality and coloring, discoloring issues. So that's looking at left hand side of the screen, your non-structural spray coatings. The same technology can be applied as an interactive coating that has some structural properties. Dependent on the pipe diameter, we can do a single pass coating up to eight millimeters thick using spray technologies combined with polyurethane material. At increased thickness, the, period, the, the, the material can bridge hairline fracture and pinhole corrosion defects providing a restoration of the system integrity. So that's your spray lining and your interactive spray coatings. Moving further to the right, you've got the interactive PE lining solution. And this is a bespoke pipe, which is made to suit the internal diameter of the host with a suitable SDR to achieve the desired life expectancy and pressure requirement. The host main has to offer structural properties and on provision of a pipe condition report, CCTV analysis, we can assist with determining the outside diameter and SDR of the liner. And you will see that these liners come in some wonderful sizes with bespoke SDR ratings. And that's why we ask to be involved as early as possible so we can assess the condition of the pipe with you and then come up with an interactive liner that will work with that host main. Finally, in rehabilitation, we have solutions that place a brand new, fully structural pipe inside the old asset. A structural pipe from a standard range of pipe OD, SDR ratings, and it takes all the in-service loads that are expected. The old pipe is simply used as a duct for a less disruptive replacement. There will be some reduction in capacity, but due to the nature of PE flow characteristics, there may be an increase in flow volumes. So because you put in a new polyethylene pipe inside an old deteriorating pipe, which eventually, if that completely disappears, it doesn't matter because the pipe that's going inside is fully structural to work at the design life and the design pressure. This slide will hopefully help with a little bit of the, uh, the terminology that's gonna be used and a structural liner fully structural, capable of on its own withstanding all the applicable loads for the full design life. Interactive liner, again, a PE pipe that relies on some of the radial support to leave the new pipe with, again, with the life expectancy and pressure requirement. And then the non-structural spray liners 
is none of the other. They're not structural or, or, or offer any structural um, support of a pipe on their own. They are just there as purely as a spray lining. So what we're looking at on the right, sorry, on the left is the spray linings uh, and the resin. Uh, our spray lining solution presenting today is, is rapid set subcoat FLP. And we, it's, it's keen to, to mention now, we actually only supply the resin for the operation. We don't do the actual spray lining operation. However, we do work closely with a number of UK companies and worldwide companies who can provide the service of doing the spray line works. But what we do is we manufacture and sell and supply the resin. So that's the, the Subco FLP product. Uh, then if you look on the right hand side, we've got the PE insertions where we're going to concentrate on close fit, the pipe folding and the diameter reduction. However, we have been involved with projects where a loose fit slip line is required. And just recently we were involved in a project on the Mayflower uh, down with South West Water. And we successfully slip lined an 800 millimeter SDR 11 pipe inside a 36 inch main. And the reason we were involved is our years of experience um, allowed us to use our pipe pushing machines in reverse to slowly insert the 800 mil pipe down some very steep hills. Otherwise the weight of the welded polyethylene pipes could have quite easily taken over and just inserted itself in the 36 inch, um, but with no full pipe at the end of it. So it was a, uh, a very interesting project that we won awards for, uh, which was, get, again, they're getting involved early and, and, and throwing our hat into the ring to say, to say what, we can, what we can do. So, pipeline rehabilitation. Folded pipe, subline PF. Concentric reduction, subline diameter reduction, formerly known as roll down. And you might hear that word banded around in this kind of technology where the pipes are pushed past rollers. And then the spray lining technology. We'll start with subline. It is a close fit PE lining technology. It is the use of thin walled PE liners, which is interactive, it's semi-structural. So it is taking strength from the host main after, as I mentioned, pipe condition reports. It has got the gap spanning, hole, circumferential crack sealing properties. So you are putting a polyethylene pipe liner inside a existing pipe. But because it's polyethylene, it will retain flow capacity. It will prevent further corrosion, further internal de 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 deterioration of the host. And because we're folding it up, this particular system will navigate round um, bends where some of the other technologies won't go around the bends and we have to use them as launch and receive pits. But depending on the pipe size, diameters, what we're talking about, SDRs, again, early involvement, we can tell you what we can get round, uh, what bends we can get round. It's a system that's suitable for all steel, ductile, cast, asbestos, cement, and has a size range from 75 mil through to 1,500 millimeters. We use standard PE resins. So and the, the products that we use to make these pipes are from the standard range of resins that we make our traditional polyethylene pipes from and that carry all the approvals for the gas and water industries. And because it's an installed using a no dig technique, it does offer less disruption and it does offer the ability to insert very long lengths of pipe in one push pull operation. There now follows a short video which shows how this works. So site location for the pipe pushing machine, excavation to gap the main, take it out of service. And with all these services, you will see that there is a, a necessity to clean the pipes down to bright metal. And there are a number of techniques now that, that get these pipes really down to bright, uh, bright metal. The liner pipe, which has been made to fit the internal diameter of the host main, is pushed past the plough bar at the front, 
attached to the towing eye and towing equipment and then it's a push pull operation to insert the banded pipes through the host main when we get to the far end the receive pit there is a specialist operation that we have to carry out now to fit flanges to the end of the pipe to allow water and the pressure to be introduced and obviously then these can be used for connecting into other equipment valves bends and other and other things that might be connecting but once we are installed and flanged up then it's a simple process of filling and pressurizing to pop the liner back out to become this close fit pe liner inside a host main and if we've got everything correct the pressure rating and life expectancy of that pipe now will last until the you know beyond the 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 hope that the, the the what we've set out to achieve a couple of schemes that now that we have been involved with because i said i said earlier these are off the peg they're ready to go kind of systems it's not innovation it's, it's it has been out there for a long time uh, at the london olympic site we had a rehabilitation of some 42 and 36 inch cast iron mains and as i mentioned about the weird and wonderful sizes of polyethylene we've got 1050 mil sdr 58 990 sdr 61 and 900 mil sdr 64. so these pipe ods wall thicknesses have been calculated to give the life expectancy of the of the systems derwent valley aqueduct rehabilitating eight kilometers of 900 potable water for seven trent in derby another very successful project that we were involved with and finally to, to reiterate we do go worldwide with this equipment we uh, carried out some works in germany on 6.7 kilometers of concrete main and that was inserting a 1200 millimeter pipe up inside there so it's proven technology and we have proven expertise to be able to work with you on these kind of projects the next system is the subline diameter reduction again it's a close fit technology it's a thick wall fully structural pipe that's going in here these are the pipes that are made and stopped by pipe manufacturers that can go inside with no further you know works to, to the pipe it's for rehabilitation of structurally weakened and corroded mains and it will stand alone after the host main disappears through deterioration or, or rust or whatever once that pipe has gone and it will work at the full pressure so if it's an sdr 1116 main it's an it's an sdr 1116 bar main for life so it restores the structural strength and obviously with a smooth ball pe it will give you the maximum flow capacity suitable for all pipelines slightly reduced range available from 100 mil to 500 mil again using standard pe resins and as i mentioned again it's sometimes off the peg in stock materials that we use and it's a no dig technology smaller excavations and long lengths of pipe going in again another short video now to show how this system works and again the pipe pushing machine is installed the pipe is gapped and the pipe is then cleaned down to the bright metal any ferrules or service offtakes off the pipe need to be cleaned and moved out of the way and taken off through through the cleaning process and this time we take the standard pe pipe and this time the pushing machine is pushing it past a series of rollers these rollers will reduce the diameter of the pipe by about 10 percent so we always use 500 mil as a as an example because that's easy to calculate that will be down to a 450 od for what now is a traditional loose fit slip line operation the winch attached and again a push and pull operation inserts the pipe through the host main but you will not get this system round bends any bends will have to become the launch and receive pits for the pipeline again operation to expand it back out to fit standard fittings onto the ends of these pipes to put flanges on and again through introduction of water and pressurization the pipe will revert back to as close to the original OD as possible 
that the horse main will allow. So you will receive some reduction in internal diameter, as I mentioned, the reduction in diameter compared with the flow characteristics through PE will, in most cases, let you get a, a, an imp improved flow through the pipe. So some schemes on what we've done here is uh, a rehabilitation of um, 1.25 kilometers of 20 inch for seven Trent water. And they had this 20 inch main taken out of service because there were so many leaks on the pipe. The council says you cannot go in that road again to repair that pipe. So it had to come out of commission. We got involved and we inserted the 500 mil OD inside the 20 inch and that project allowed Seven Trent to get the water main back into service to obviously improve and maintain the water supply around this area of Leicester. Another project for, for Seven Trent involved a shorter section, but the challenges were that this 12 inch pipe that needed an, ins an insertion going through it was actually under the West Coast main line. And when network analysis said how far the 250 pipe that was being proposed could be inserted inside the 12 inch, it meant all excavations would have been inside network rail boundary and footprint. By going for a close fit liner of 315, it meant that the, the actual distance that could be inserted was approaching 90 meters, which took the inserted length outside the uh, boundary of network rail. And that was something that was very keen that Seven Trent and the contractor wanted to um, wanted to avoid. Now, you'll probably get to the point where you realize that these technologies is not gonna solve every problem that you have out there with your problem mains or rehabilitation. But when they do, they are true engineering solutions that will solve and, and, and do the job that they're meant to do. And I mentioned the ready to go systems. And in fact, we've got two projects shortly starting, uh, Southeast Water with Clancy at Hindhead, where we'll be inserting 350 meters of 160 inside of 150 main. And there's also a project with SGN at Didcot to insert 1200 meters of 315 inside a 12 inch. I'd like to finish this section of the diameter reduction, because I'm conscious of time and just seeing it there, uh, a project that we took with um, NGN, uh, an NIA funded project, where they asked us if we could actually pre-roll down the 160 mil for insertion in six inch mains. The reason was they didn't want to take the big pipe reduction uh, kit, the big unit to reduce the pipe through the roll down onto site every time. So we rolled down in the factory 160 coils to 144, 145 OD, and then they take them out to site for their six inch insertions uh, on cast iron mains. And they, do, they have their own reversion kit so they can reverse the pipes themselves, but it cuts down in all the congested areas around Leeds and Bradford and Newcastle where they've got six inch size for size replacement. They can use these pre-rolled coils to avoid um, the, a, a particular bridge on the Keithley and Worth Valley Railway the, the previously on doing some re, re, re repair works and works on the six inch main they'd actually hit this bridge and it cost them an arm and a leg because it was a, a historic monument we they didn't want to go near the bridge any further so next time they came to do it, they went with their pre-rolled down 160 mil from the top of the road to the bottom of the road, avoiding any, anywhere near the, uh, the, the bridge with the, with the Worth Valley Railway on. Moving swiftly on to spray lining. Uh, this spray lining over the years, it's had good press, it's had bad press, it's been blamed on core installation, it's been on, blamed on product but it is now finding its way back onto water company's radar for the improvement of water quality and discoloration issues. So it's a, it restores the, the, the drinking water quality. It's applied using a centrifugal spray, but as I mentioned, we don't do that, but there are some very competent companies now out there that can do spray lining. It has 
in depending on the high build um, installation or spray, got the gap spanning and certain little pinhole type uh, sealing properties. But because it's a fast setting resin, you can be back in service after an hour. And be, there's no, the service remark, service outlets remain open. So you've no need to go back for reconnections. The product is fully approved for use in contact with public drinking water. It's a smooth coating for maximum hydraulic properties and it's got excellent strength and stiffness and no shrinkage. And again, we have a, a short video to just see how the spray lining technology goes through. Again, excavations will be required, pipe cleaning will be required and a quick camera survey to, to make sure that everything's good to go. I mean, this shows the old type of uh, drag scraper, but as I mentioned, there's a lot of water jetting type scraper, uh, cleaning properties out there, companies out there that, that get these pipes really good down to bright metal so that when you come to apply the resins, that there is a very good adhesion of the product to the, to the main to give you that um, water quality improvement and discoloration improvement. And as I mentioned, with our product, depending on the build, one mil, it is all applied in one coat we don't go back and build after build after build if we're going for one mil we go for one mil if we go for three mil we go for three mil it's all done in one um particular or one one specific pass of the spray lining head simple map showing where we export our product to where we've uh, we've covered the world with with exporting this resin and as i mentioned fast setting it's been developed independently by Radius. It's a true polyurethane, and, and as I said, it's got a high stiffness, stiffness, excellent adhesion, and negligible shrinkage when the product has been applied correctly. So, as mentioned, the same resin is used for both low build and high build. So, one millimeter for simple drinking water quality, and then maybe higher builds where you're looking to maybe a little bit of gap filling or a little bit of pinhole. Um, hull repair but as i mentioned one hour to, one hour to cure at three degrees and the product itself now has been extended it's got a 12 month shelf life so people buying the product you haven't got a, a deadline to say i've got to get these jobs done you, you have got a, a bit of time with these some information now on on the the, the numbers uh, our low build one millimeter over the years we've we've completed over two thousand two hundred thousand meters of 100 to 150 diameters um, has been spray lined. Then on the commercial side of things, or sorry, on the higher build kind of things, three millimeter and above, you've got varying from 100 to 300, 10,000 meters completed at three mil thick, 300 to 500, we've got 8,000 meters uh, at three to five millimeter thickness, and then larger diameters, over 2,000 metres completed at a four to five millimetre thickness. So this again, it's proving that this is tried and trusted system and product that does work if you uh, apply these spray linings correctly. As I mentioned, we're covered by the uh, UK Water Regulations Advisory, the RAS scheme and certification for that's approved, drinking water regulation 31 approved, the NSF and ANSI standards, to name a few that would be current and, and, and needed in the UK. And then again, European standards and worldwide standards that we have for exporting our products worldwide. So just to finish off with, I'm just going to mention one other element of our core technologies, which I said um, integrated with the pipe modification ones, the the roll down diameter reduction, the pipe folding and other systems out there, which we also can get involved with, which is swage lining. Or if it's installing a PE pipe, we would be interested. But this range of branch saddles are known as minimus that we manufacture. We don't sell them, we install them as part of our day to day services. The branch saddle itself, as you can see in the center of the picture, is a 
polyethylene starts life as a polyethylene block and we machine the profile for the od of the pipe and we machine the stub end so that it's one solid piece construction a split backing ring is used for the connection of the valve the strap is there purely purely for an extra safety uh, feature our uh, our method for putting these pipes, uh, these saddles onto pipes, comes from a top loading device, not that saddle strap. That saddle strap, that stainless steel strap is fitted afterwards, just in case anybody tries to pull the saddle off, it's there for extra security. But it means there's only one electrofusion joint done on the pipe. Because it's a profiled machine that we use, the CNC machine, if we modify the outside diameter of a pipe, we can then feed that new diameter into the computer and make bespoke saddles to fit the pipes that's been modified. We have some large outlets so we can go right up to 300 mm MP16 for picking up other services and connections along the way. And then we've got the smaller diameters, the 80 and 100s, if washouts, air valves, any kind of connection that needs to be made along the length because it's, it's pointless putting a long length of pipe inside a host main and then have to start breaking out at high spots for air valves what we need to do is we need to break out the minimum amount to put an air valve on the top of the pipe exposed we don't want to be breaking out and welding flanges on to put equal t's in ductile iron and other materials so this is why this minimus branch saddle is running alongside the diameter reduction and the pipe folding and other other systems that modify the outside diameter of pipes but they aren't just used for that we do these on a daily basis for the for the standard pipes that's in the ground we'll be going out we'll probably be doing three or four of these every single day across the country on the gas and um water networks making live connections um, on, on those networks and then just to finish off on this bit every connection that we make using these saddles is covered by a uh, a lifetime guarantee using a bespoke version of the control point blue box and that means that when we do a joint the joint stays as the life expectancy of the pipe and I think there we go that is the end of the presentation hopefully we've got time for a, a few questions um, if there are any out there and I will do my best to answer them thank you Dave brilliant overview and briefly of that and fantastic graphics I would admit um, being the Angevin, it's great to see the Olympic Village in there at the start of your uh, presentation um, we have had a few questions uh, I'll start from the top a few people asking if presentation will be available Yes, this will be going out on all the social media platforms. The presentation slides have been made available too. Um, first question, well, Alistair has asked, well, mentioned that he's interested in life diameter pipelines in the range of 40 to 50 inch. I believe, did you cover that, Dave? I think, I think you did mention those sort of sizes. Um, yeah, 1500 millimeter diameter is the largest that we can go to on the pipe folding system and 500 millimeter which is 20 inch so i would think pipe folding quick maths is probably up to about 60 inch diameter reduction is up to 20 inch 500 millimeter so if i've got my maths correct 1500 millimeter should be 60 inch so yeah we'd be we'd be very interested in talking to alistair about anything that he's got um where we can have a look at but above 500 we'd only be looking at liners interactive rather than structure fully structural so but yeah we're more than happy to have a conversation all right alistair i'd recommend you, you get in touch um there's another question slightly down about how does the liner deal with bore variation uh, does it allow to be expanded by the pressure to maintain a close fit and what happens with a vacuum condition well, the pressures that we, we introduce when we, when we revert the pipes is upwards of 19 bar, so that the pipe will find its place as a close fit liner all round. We, we've not really come across any evidence where we're not getting the close fit line along the inside of the pipe, unless it is, 
it's it's all down to the clean and the preparation if we've cleaned and pre prepared the pipe correctly then when the when the liner goes in it will make contact touching contact all the way a length all the way along the length and that's what i mentioned the cleanliness and scraping at the start of it is you should you, you will only get an issue if we haven't cleaned and scraped the pipe down to bare metal if we're down to bare metal the process of reversion will make sure that those pipes are close fit touching the host main when the process is completed okay i hope that, I hope that answers your question um another question was well, a few questions around um cleaning of the pipelines and then about the techniques you do use is that what you do or is that something that um client would be expected to do beforehand that would be something the client would do through with the partner that's working on the pipe so the tier one partners would be responsible for all the cleaning the tier, uh, the cctv we can get involved and, and as i say we do know companies who have worked on the pipelines that we've worked on so we do have contacts but that the actual preparation of the pipe ready for the the new main to be inserted is down to the the the, the contract partner that's working on that for on behalf of the water companies okay so that would be traditional techniques that i think nick preston's detailed in the questions yeah. um does the subcoat spray lining require post installation chlorination um chlorinization chlorinization right to return to service for water that is a very good question and if nick's got his microphone on or dave's got the microphone on i could do with a bit of help on that one so chlorination of the spray line after it's been inserted do we have a do we have an answer or do we need to go back and find the answer and go back um i'll jump in here this is dave sykes um uh, the, the normal water regulations would apply so you you as Dave says on, on the lining techniques, cleanliness is next to godliness. So you need to clean it down to bright metal. You need to dry it the best you can, and then you spray it. And then normal chlorination procedures would apply. Brilliant. Okay. I think Nick, Nick's then asked, asked the next question about, do you suggest that all PE joints are in blue box? We at Radius um, uh, Subterra always use Blue Box for all our connections because it, it, it captures all the information that is required by any of you, the utilities or contractors. Uh, and we do that because we can prove that we've pressure tested it, we can prove that we've loaded it correctly, we can give them a, uh, a longitude and latitude and a Google map. Uh, we've got three digital pictures of showing how we've uh, prep, prep the pipe so we can show that we've uh, scraped it, clamped it, and recovered the coupon uh, for argument's sake if we're doing a branch saddle. And all that information is captured there. Plus, the other details that we capture on this mat is that we capture the, uh, the pipe parameters so we get the, the what size it is, what SDR it is, and the serial number. The same for the valve, so whoever's valve we're using in one of the gas companies. Uh, when uh, a certain uh, uh, valve manufacturer were having trouble with the bonnets blowing off, we were the only company to be able to um, supply the gas companies every single location of every single valve that we'd laid. Um, they couldn't because they, it usually goes into their stores, whenever their stores is, and then it's distributed out and they don't capture, it's just a valve to them, they don't capture the information, whereas we do on site. So. The, we do, we, we highly recommend it and I think it's a, a good process to follow because it just covers your clients and yourselves uh, derriere, should we say. Thank you for that. Thank you for the addition. I'm just mindful of time. Um, yep. we'll, we'll have to draw this to a close, but all the questions will be downloaded and sent to Dave and, and the team to, to answer and send out following the presentation. Um, firstly, thank you so much, Dave, and thank you, Radius of Terra. Really up this time this afternoon. Well, this afternoon, um, I just wanted to point out just before we go that there are a couple more events coming up soon. Loads of webinars on the uh, website. Try to pick out two. One being the children's webinar on 23rd July, uh, the amazing world of pipelines and what they can do. 
and secondly the pipeline um pub quiz tomorrow which is hosted by our amazing uh, hq so if you if you have some time tomorrow you could join that it's gonna be a fantastic event so thank you everyone i'll bring that to a close thank you thank you cheers dave matt are you still there i am yeah